Good morning and welcome to Sardis Presbyterian Church. We are so glad that you are worshiping with us on this chilly Sunday. We recorded this worship service on Thursday in order to be prepared for whatever the weather may do this weekend. In doing so, please note that the music is from previously recorded services. Can you guess what season of the church year the music piece came from? You could drop your guess in the Facebook comments if you're here with us on Facebook. And please say hello in those comments. We are worshiping with you and would love to interact with you. We'd also like to know that you are here with us today so we can feel a sense of community. Please fill out the Connect card that is linked to this post on Facebook and on YouTube. And on both sides, there's also a link to a membership engagement form. If you haven't filled it out yet, that will help us connect you to the areas that you would like to serve here at Sardis. Reverend Allison Schaaf's installation service will be next Sunday at the 9 o'clock worship service. Please join us in person or online as we celebrate along with the Presbytery of Charlotte that Allison is joining us here in ministry. And please check your weekly email and the Sardis website and Facebook page for updates for all the activities that are happening here at Sardis. And now please join me in the call to worship. How precious is your steadfast love, O God. All people may take refuge in the shadow of your wings. They feast on the abundance of your house, and you give them drink from the river of your delights. For with you is the fountain of life. In your light we see light. O oh, continue your steadfast love to those who know you and your salvation to the upright of heart. Let us worship God. Oh, your peace. 
morning, especially to our youngest disciples. I'm sad that we can't be together today, but I hope that you're staying warm and having a really fun day. And Jeannie and I are excited to get to see you like this again. So I have a fun book for us today called Wild About Us. So let's see what it says. I am a warty warthog. Can't be who I'm not. I am who I am and I've got what I've got. I have tusk, I have warts, but I like what I see in my own special way. I'm as cute as can be. Yes siree, we are all the way we are all meant to be. Crocodile's proud of his big toothy grin. Rhino feels fine and her wrinkly skin. Elephant's confident nothing is wrong. He knows that his nose is supposed to be long. No one laughs at giraffe because she's lanky and tall. Here at the zoo, there is room for us all. Would you dare tell Flamingo he shouldn't be pink? Or Pot-bellied Pig, she's too plump, do you think? We never tease Tortoise for being so slow. He's not meant to hurry or scurry, you know. Does porcupine care that she can't curl her hair? Is leopard upset? He has spots everywhere? Hippo is happy. She loves her behind. It wiggles, it jiggles, it's one of a kind. She's proud of precisely the way it's designed. Chip's ears stick, chimp's ears stick out, as you clearly can see but he thinks they're charming and we all agree. Kangaroo has huge feet, but you don't see her pout. She has much better things to be thinking about. We're glad we're all different. It would be such a shame if you came to the zoo and we all looked the same. The end. I think that's such a fun story and Jobia is going to read some scripture in a minute and we're going to be reminded that God made all of us different. God didn't want us all to be the same. God gave us each special gifts and ways to be the people that God wanted us to be. We don't have to be like anybody else. We just need to be like the person God wants us to be. So this week, and maybe even while you're playing in the snow or the sleet or whatever is happening, maybe you will find a way to share God's love in the exact way that you were meant to. So let's say a prayer together, all right? Dear God, thank you for the ways that you made us who we are. Help us to be proud of the people that you made us to be and help us to share your love in whatever ways we can. As we prepare to, to hear your word, open our hearts and our minds so that we might be inspired and hear things in a new way. In your name we pray. Amen. Our scripture reading is from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. In this letter, Paul was answering a letter he had received from the Corinthians that had some questions. One was about spiritual gifts. Part of his answer is in chapter 12, verses 1 through 11. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Brothers and sisters, I don't want you to be ignorant about spiritual gifts. You know that when you were Gentiles, you were often misled by false gods that can't even speak. So I want to make it clear to you that no one says Jesus is cursed when speaking by God's Spirit. And no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. There are different spiritual gifts, but the same Spirit. There are different ministries and the same Lord. 
And there are different activities, but the same God who produces all of them in everyone. A demonstration of the Spirit is given to each person for the common good. A word of wisdom is given by the Spirit to one person, a word of knowledge to another according to the same Spirit. Faith still to another by the same Spirit. Gifts of healing to another in the one Spirit. Performance of miracles to another. Prophecy to another. The ability to tell spirits apart to another. Different kinds of tongues to another. And the interpretation of the tongues to another. All these things are produced by the one and same Spirit who gives what He wants to each person. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Christians in Corinth were dealing with divisions in their congregation, and one of the problems seems to be that some were valuing certain spiritual gifts over others, and therefore certain people over others. The showier spiritual gifts like speaking in tongues were getting too much emphasis at the expense of other important things. So Paul explains how all sorts of different spiritual gifts matter and that they are all important because they all come from the Holy Spirit. If you've ever been on a team, you get that. Whether it was a sports team, business team, mission team, school project team, or a family team with its variety of roles. You need different people to be good at doing different things for the whole team to reach its goal or work at its most productive level. Any one of those types of teams would serve as a good illustration for a church team. But the paragraph just after our reading, in that, Paul blessed his readers with an illustration that future preachers would find difficult to top, with the human body as a metaphor for the church. Can't do better than that. Not everybody wants to hear me talk about basketball all the time, but everybody has a body. And while many people impressively excel in life with bodies that work differently and provide some different challenges than other people's bodies, Paul wrote about how a body needs arms, eyes, ears, and all the other parts so that it can do the things that it's supposed to do because, he wrote, if the whole body was an eye, where would the hearing be? And if the whole body was an ear, where would the sense of smell be? In our verses, Paul described a little more directly how that works in the church. The church team or body needs people with wisdom and knowledge. Those are two different things. And faith and the ability to heal and do other miraculous things that the world does not expect to happen. The church needs people who can discern God's vision for the future and who can make right decisions in the present. And it needs people who can communicate what the church knows and does and believes to others and in a variety of ways. Paul's list holds up pretty well after 2,000 years. It is unlikely that we will find excellence in all those areas in just one person. And so Paul says that each member is equipped by the Spirit with certain gifts that make them good at certain things that the church is called to do. Only with this diversity of gifts and a willingness to use them can the church be what God means it to be. A demonstration of the Spirit is given to each person for the common good. Diversity is a precondition for healthy growth and productivity. We see that in nature as it was illustrated in the book Sarah Diane read, and we know that the environment requires a complex and sometimes delicate combination of parts in order to support life. God built this diversity principle into creation from the beginning. And it applies whether we're talking about the environment or your investment portfolio, your child's education can't just study one thing, healthier physical fitness through cross-training and a balanced diet, the context of the parts of a city working together effectively, your sports team, 
or a congregation. Diversity is a precondition for healthy growth and productivity. So this is not just about the greater sum total of our collective talents when we share them, but about the variety of them. Talent is important, but variety is too. When I was a first-year associate pastor in Knoxville, Tennessee, the senior pastor, Dr. Carswell Hughes, put me in charge of the church's annual talent show. It had always been a contest with one act getting voted by all the people there as the winner, which I thought was kind of a bad idea for a church. I also thought that I would like to win but I knew that I didn't have any talent that would win even one vote. So I rebranded the talent show as a variety show, no talent required, to give myself a chance. I saved my own act for the end to be fresh in the voter's mind, and I pulled out my nose flute and proceeded to play Beethoven's Fifth Symphony in C minor. <laughs> I have no idea if that was C minor. Well, the crowd went wild, as I'm sure you expected, and I thought that I was a surefire winner. But then Dr. Hughes came up and said that he had one more act. He was not on my list, but he signed my checks so he could do what he wanted. Dr. Hughes called all the kids to come up, and he pulled out three marbles. And then he asked them each to try to balance the three marbles on their head. Of course, no one could even balance one of them. But the kids had a great time trying and laughing as they chased escaping marbles across the fellowship hall floor. Now, a year before, Dr. Hughes had been in a terrible horseback riding accident that had required brain surgery, and it was no small miracle that he was back in the pulpit. He had had to learn how to talk again and how to walk again. His struggle through that was a struggle for the whole congregation. And the whole congregation still needed some healing. And there were still moments when the damage in Dr. Hughes' brain caused him to unexpectedly pause, sometimes for minutes, while his thoughts tried to find a new path through the healthy nerves in his brain. It was embarrassing for him and awkward for everyone, and we just didn't know how to deal with it sometimes. But another miraculous result of his struggle was that the brain surgery left three dents in his skull, just the right size for holding marbles. He put them in there and then made some joke about losing his marbles and getting them back, and that gave everyone permission to laugh about something that had caused so much pain and uneasiness. There was a lot of healing. And all the votes. The nose flute never stood a chance. It's been 25 years, and I'm still trying to balance a marble on my head. I can't. I can't do this, though. No, I can't. Variety makes the world more interesting. But variety is not just for show. It has a purpose. My mentor, Carswell Hughes, had a lot of spiritual gifts. But those three marbles brought a lot of joy and healing to that church that day. It was not a gift with which he was born or that he had practiced to perfect or that was on Paul's list of spiritual gifts. But it was a gift used spiritually and produced joy and healing because of its variety. There are two other verses in this passage I want to look at because at first reading, they didn't seem to fit with anything Paul was saying about spiritual gifts or their variety. So I want to make it clear to you 
that no one says Jesus is cursed when speaking by God's Spirit. And no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. I get those verses on their own, but here's what I think they mean regarding spiritual gifts. We say Jesus is Lord by using the gifts the Spirit gives us. We are demonstrating the presence of God's Spirit in our lives by using the gifts that Spirit has given us for the common good as we follow Christ. And if Jesus is our Lord, we cannot help but use those gifts for him. And church is a way to take this variety of gifted people and incorporate them into one faith ecology that makes a louder proclamation to the world that Jesus is Lord. What is the demonstration of the Spirit that God has given you? What are your gifts? What are the things that you are good at doing, and how do you put those to use for common good in Christ's church? We break them into six core discipleship actions at Sardis, praising, learning, loving, serving, sharing, and witnessing. We need people to use their gift of music, among other things, to lead us in praise. If music is your gift and you don't use it here, it increases the chances of the nose flute. Yes, that is a threat. We need teachers and students to make learning happen. We need Stephen ministers and prayer shawl knitters to care for members and express love. We need all sorts of volunteers for mission to serve with Room in the Inn and at Rama Road and to go on mission trips to Kenya. We need a variety of givers to share money and all the other items we collect to donate to people who need them. The Church of Jesus Christ needs people who are ready to share their faith too and witness to others what it means to have faith in Jesus Christ and live out that faith with others in his church. If the whole church is learning, where would the serving be? If the whole church is just praising God in worship on Sunday morning, where would the loving relationships God calls us to have with one another be? Diversity is a precondition for healthy growth and productivity. A healthy, growing, and productive church will be the one that's working to use member gifts in all these areas. How can you add to the variety of gifts Christ is putting to work at Sardis? Do you have a gift that you're wondering how to put to use for Christ in his church? Check out that member engagement form Katie mentioned in the announcements, and I bet it'll give you some ideas. Even if it's something like balancing marbles on your head, it is a spiritual gift when we use it for Christ and for common good. There are different spiritual gifts, but the same Spirit. There are different ministries and the same Lord, and there are different activities, but the same God who produces all of them in everyone. And I don't think that just means talents. Other kinds of variety make the faith ecology in the church grow healthy too. Variety is not just for show in God's creation. It has a purpose. Who we are and the experiences we've had and all the things that make us different is another gift to the world from God. What we've studied, where we've lived, where we have traveled, what we have struggled with. Gender, race, age, from the wonder of toddlers to the wisdom of veteran members. Life stage, sexuality, worldviews, political perspectives, philosophies, values, and passions. Only with this variety of people, experiences, and gifts, and a willingness to use them can the church be what God means it to be. All are gifts to the church through the Spirit in you. All a part of the faith ecology in which we seek to explore faith and change lives. We're glad we're all different. It would be such a shame if you came to the church and we all looked the same and sounded the same and thought the same and did only the same things, use your gifts for Christ 
and demonstrate the Spirit in you for the common good and to the glory of God. Amen. Don't hide your hurt or your joy. Prayer isn't a comparison game or cause for shame. The prayers of God's people open the window of the divine to let compassion blow in freely. Toss out the scorecard, let the breeze blow away the need for having just the right words to say. Prayer is our time to listen and be heard. Our time to be human and be reminded of the love that surrounds, fills, and connects us all. The prayers of God's people long for us all to be seen, to be heard, to be loved, to be cared for like we carry the image of God within us, and we do. So may we see each moment and word that we share with one another, each moment when we are alone, and every moment in between as an act of prayer, a window open to the breeze of the Spirit, a cup ready to be filled and overflow. A new page bound to an old promise, I am with you. We give thanks for laughter and tiny moments of joy throughout our days. We give thanks for time with family and time to take a deep breath on our own. We give thanks for time to unwind in the evenings with a movie or a game or a good book. We give thanks for neighbors who wave as they go by and pause to ask, what do you need? We pray for those searching for a call, for a new job opportunity, for discernment along the way. We pray for teachers and daycare workers. We pray for family to recover from COVID. We pray for our children, our homeless neighbors, our most vulnerable to stay safe and healthy. We pray for the families of Robert Cheatham and Betty Novak who are grieving. We pray for clergy and staff pivoting and reimagining once again how we can do church and life together. We pray for all of God's people. Amen. Let's join together and say the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
There is a demonstration of the Holy Spirit in the gifts that you have been given. May God bless each one of us with opportunities to use them and the will to do so. The peace of Jesus Christ be with you. Go in peace. Amen.